What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and we're going to go over some spacing methods once more in material design here, how they approach spacing their elements and they use terminology that is very useful that we're going to go over in the documentation and in our exercise file here we can go ahead and click on this link in Figma where we'll have access to opening the spacing methods page in Figma and we're going to go over everything in the contents here and spacing methods are essentially just the use of baseline grids, uh, key lines padding and incremental spacing to adjust uh, certain ratios, uh, containers and touch targets. A lot of this is very important. I know it might be slightly boring, but this is very, uh, this is a great resource for us learning uh, not only spacing for materials design system, but also applying this to any other systems we create or products we get to design moving forward. And here we have our baseline grid where it just discusses how all components align to an eight dip square baseline grid for mobile, tablet, and desktop. So we can go ahead and replicate that here. So here you can see that this square is eight by eight dips, which is essentially just eight by eight pixels um, if you were to design for the web. And here um, in Figma, we're gonna go ahead and create a screen that is uh, set to the size of a MacBook Pro screen. And I'm just gonna label this eight dip baseline grid. So, and then I'm gonna apply a layout grid. So, and then set the size to eight here. And I now have a eight dip baseline grid that I can always, that I can utilize to measure my elements here on this frame. So that is very important to note. And it's great to have. So that is a direct translation of how that is written out in the documentation, how to create that in Figma. And we also have a four dip grid where that is utilized in more dense areas, such as icons, type, and some elements with components that can align to a four dip grid. And if we wanted to create a four dip grid, honestly, all we have to do is duplicate this one. I can rename that to four dips. And then from there, I would need to, whoops, I have that set to 18. That should be at eight. So now that's set to eight, my apologies. And now that that's set to eight, I can go ahead and change this one to four. And now we have a four dip baseline grid and a eight dip baseline grid. And the usages for those, for those are specified here. So typography aligns to the four dip baseline grid. And this typography can be placed outside of the four dip grid when it's centered within a component, such as a button or list item and when it's placed outside of the grid but centered within a component, text can still appear vertically center aligned. As in this scenario, you can see that as well. It is vertically aligned in the center of this list item right here, although the type is placed outside of the four dip grid. So that is something important to note there. And then we're gonna talk about some terminology that we'll be using frequently throughout the course when we build these components from scratch. So they're using these buttons as examples. So the spacing methods are more granular than the responsive grid layout, where it is a set of rules around how to place elements within layouts and components. So padding refers to the spacing here between elements within a component. So you can see that there's padding to the left and right of this icon and there's padding to the left and right of this button on the right and that and that um, it is has alignment that is vertically centered within this button which is expressed in this example in this alignment spacing method example where the button with the plus icon is vertically aligned to the center within the button component and of course we have dimensions which we'll be going over very much soon where it describes the width and height of a component's elements. So we'll know exactly how to size our components and the elements within them accordingly by utilizing the dimensions. And then it, it talks about specifically padding and how it refers to the space between UI elements and how it is an alternative spacing method to key lines and is measured in increments of eight dips or four. So again, you'll notice that it's always divisible by eight or four. And padding can be measured both vertically and horizontally and does not need to span the whole height of a layout. And of course, we have the dimensions specified here for the component. 
the height here is set to 88 as you can see and it gives you the specs for the height of the app bar which is set to 56 dips and then the status bar is height is set to 24 dips and of course this list item set to 88 dips so this is uh, important to refer to when we really need to ensure that our elements are uh, pixel perfect or in this case density independent pixel perfect and then of course we have the alignment which is the placement of elements and here it's just giving you examples of elements being highlighted and discussing how they are centered so that is great and then we also have key lines and it's a tool that enables consistent placement of elements outside of a layout grid and they are vertical lines that show where elements are placed when they don't align to the grid. Key lines help you determine the distance between uh, elements from the edge of the screen. And you can also measure uh, in increments of eight and then also move your, it helps you a lot in Figma. So if I open up Figma and I create some text here, and once I have that text created, I can go ahead and even create a rectangle. Here, if I hold down option, you'll notice that key lines appear and I see that this is 240 pixels away to the left in this text. And I can measure from the edges of the screen, from the top edge, the distance between, and the left edge and the bottom edge, and even the very far right edge, as well as this too, by just holding down option or alt on Windows, option on Mac. And those are my key lines that helps me specify the distance between elements. We're going to be using this shortcut key all the time when we're building components to ensure they're pixel perfect. So that is what key lines are. And you can also use rulers in Figma. If I hit Shift R, you'll notice that in the canvas, this these set of rulers appear. And you can measure to the distance between the rulers as well. And you can create a vertical or horizontal by just dragging from within the ruler and onto the canvas. And you can measure the distance between as long as you hold option and hover over that red, that ruler line or key line, we could call it. And you can hide them by hitting shift R. And those are how we'll use key lines. And next we'll talk about containers and ratios. And essentially containers a term that refers to uh, an enclosed area. And essentially containers are composed of UI elements such as images, icons, or surfaces. So here we have an image container. Here we have an icon container and we have, of course, a surface container, which encapsulates a button. And containers can be rigid and restrict the size of or cropping of elements within them. So you can utilize containers to uh, crop images if they were in an image container or even an icon container. Uh, but that, but it's typically utilized more often with image containers where you'll need to crop an image. Um, but they can be flexible and grow to support the size of the content that it holds. As you can see in these examples, we have a rigid image container in example number one, um, which crops the original size of the image, or we have a flexible image container in example number two that holds the original image size as it scales. And then there are some important things to understand here where uh, we talk about aspect ratios, where the aspect ratio is a proportion of an element's width to its height and its aspect ratio is written as such width to height and to maintain consistency in your layout material design uses a consistent set of aspect ratios on elements like images surfaces and screen sizes and it is recommended for us to use this these set of aspect ratios across our ui and you can see them here so we, you can see some landscape formats where this ratio is created and then uh, some, some portrait formats as well. And it talks about flexible ratios, uh, which is determined by the layout grid where the container width is determined by the screen layout and grows to fill the maximum space available. So it's just referring to a responsive screen. Um, and a container height is determined by the height of the image in the container. Um, with these flexible ratio principles and you can use a flexible ratio to allow content form determine the height of the container which is very common and um, one of the most important things to understand is touch targets 
and how touch targets apply to any device that receives both touch and non-touch input. And this is these principles are used to balance information, density, and usability all in one and touch targets should at least be a size of 48 by 48 dips or 48 by 48 pixels with at least eight dips of space between each target. So you see that the dimension specified here, although see this icon uh, container is set to 40 by 40 dips, the tap target is set to 48 by 48 dips. So that is very important. And if you were to have another uh, icon container next to it or any or a button for example it would have to be at least eight dips of space between the targets so I can go ahead and do that so say I had an icon here set to 40 by 40 I can I can specify th this I can create a frame and then hold down option command to scale this to 48 by 48 and then I can center this and you'll notice that I'll change the background here to white, maybe a little slight red, and the red ref references the tap target. And the icon here is this circle, and the tap target set to 48 by 48, but the icon itself is 40 by 40. So those are the dimensions for the tap target, and then if you were to create another element next to it, you would at least have to have a spacing of eight dips. So that is essentially what this is referencing here, and you can see that this button has a height of 36 dips, but the tap target's height is set to 48 dips. So that's very important. And you can see in the second example that there is an icon set to 24 by 24 dips, but the tap target is set to 48 by 48 dips. So that is a standard principle for accessibility, um, just to ensure that you can actually tap these uh, elements on the interface correctly and it adheres to not only balancing information on your screen and usability, especially for impaired users, but it just allows for a more cohesive design. And that is all I have for you today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.